The Lions were one of those teams in the top 10 that Carter has visited with as well. And they have four selections in the top 55 picks in this year's draft. Here's a look at who Mel Kuyper Jr. and Todd McShay have them taking in the first two rounds of their latest GM mock draft. In the first round, it's all about defensive line, with Detroit selecting Tyree Wilson and Kalijah Kansi. Second round, they had the Lions adding running back Jameer Gibbs. I love it. Linebacker Drew Sanders, some great pickups. All those pieces just might set this team up for even more success. And Amonra St. Brown says they're already holding themselves to high standards. Here's more on that, specifically about their offense. He said, quote, we had a pretty decent offense last year. Obviously, you want to be number one in every category. So I think that's what we're striving for as an offense. I think that's everyone's goal in offense because we know we can do it. Whatever we got to do to be number one in all those categories, that's what we're going to do. Well, Jared Goff chimed in, tempered some expectations a little bit, saying, quote, I don't believe there are any favorites to win anything in April, but what do I know? A lot can change from now until August or whatever. We like what we've done in the offseason and last year, but plenty of stuff to get better and work on. It's kind of two sides of the coin there, but either way, we agree that hope should be high for the Lions. A lot of us on this show feel like they're going to be a force to be reckoned with next season. Lewis, where do you rank the Lions in the NFC North? I think they're easily the favorites to win the division, Laura. I think we, on offense, look, the addition of David Montgomery to go along with DeAndre Swift is huge. I think now that Jamison Williams will be healthy for an entire season, I think that is huge on the outside, to, in the, on the perimeter. I think defensively, they really address some things, especially in the secondary with, you know, the signing of guys like Emmanuel Mosley and then C.J. Gardner-Johnson. They just need to get some pass rush help to go along with Aiden Hutchinson. And I can tell you this, this team is primed and ready to roll. They finished the season 8-10 and 10 last year. Their defense played great down the stretch, and Jared Goff was on fire. This team's going to be a problem in 2023, all the way to maybe the NFC Championship game. It, yes. it, they yes. finished on a roll last year. It felt like they were a team that nobody wanted to run into, and they'll take that next step no matter what. Matt, we saw what Todd and Mel did in their GM mock that just debuted. What are you hearing about the Lions and their draft options with those four picks? Yeah, that was a fantastic haul that the guys put together for the Lions. I think Detroit fans would be very happy. One thing I'm hearing consistently, and I think Lewis mentioned it here, is cornerback help is still needed. They traded away Jeff Okuda, who has been injured often in his career, but he was coming off a career year. Even with Cam Sutton and Emmanuel Mosley coming in, there's a belief that they would like to find a young number one corner. That could be Devin Weatherspoon from Illinois, who had a fantastic season last year. And then I think you have to go to the pass rush. James Houston, a sixth round pick, had great production last year. We know how great Aiden Hutchinson is. I'm not just doing this for Lewis Riddick, who was a great Pitt Panther himself, but Kalaja Kansu would be fantastic in this defense with his first step quickness, with the pass rush ability. I don't know how five offensive linemen could block what they could do with Hutchinson, Kansi, and Houston. That is a lot of speed at three premier positions. So that would be, I think, the ideal situation, talking to those people around the league about how Detroit can pull ahead in the NFC North. But what if you could get Jalen Carter at six Ooh. and Cancy at 18? Like, you think about this team, right? And we, we think about the Detroit Lions. Physicality, they bring, they bring lunch pails to work, and those are the type of guys that they want to put on this football team. I played football with Dan Campbell. He was a tight end. He is hard-nosed and about the line of scrimmage. I'm telling y'all right now, <laughs> if Jalen Carter available at number six, that damn card would burn up from me trying to take it up there to the commissioner to put it on the board, <laughs> especially with what I drafted in Aiden Hutchinson last year and the year he put together and the impact that these type of three techniques are having on championship football teams and defenses in general. There is no doubt in my mind if it was me and Jalen Carter was sitting there with all of the things figured out from a legal standpoint with him already. That'll be the card I'm running up there with. And pray to God that Kansi is there at 18. Because yeah. now I got a defensive line, like I saw the Philadelphia Eagles with, with 70 sacks last year, that I could really put out there and know that I could dominate games in that regard. As you've told us, interior D-line, that's where it's at. Those are going to be some of the game changers with where the game is at right now in the NFL. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.